Hello and welcome. In this video, we want to do a question related to intermediate value theorem or IVT. This is a famous question and it's sometimes they name it fixed point theorem. Suppose f of x is a continuous function on the interval 0 to 1 and the function f is from 0, 1 to 0, 1. Let me explain you what is the meaning of this. Here, this shows the domain which we had here. We have a continuous function from 0 to 1. But what is this? This shows that the y value of the function f is between 0 and 1. It can be 0, it can be 1, but it should be always between 0 and 1. But not necessarily it takes 0 and 1 as the values. But it should be, whatever the value of the function f is, it should be between 0 and 1. This simply shows this. So the meaning of this notation now should be clear for you. What we want to prove based on this, show that there is a number c between greater than or equal 0 and less than or equal 1, such that f of c equals c. Attention to here. This is really important, but usually the students neglect this part attention in the intermediate value theorem when we use intermediate value theorem to prove something we prove c is between a and b in this case 0 and 1 but here it can happen that c be equal to 0 or c be equal to 1 so consider this so show that there is a number c such that f of c equals c but what is the meaning of this let me show you what this means f of c equals c attention first of all we have a function that is in this box between 0 and 1 is the domain and the y also is trapped between 0 and 1. Whatever you want to get a for function f should be continuous and it should be in this box. For example, maybe you think to a graph like this. It starts from here, it goes like this. Or maybe you think to a different graph like this or any other graph you can imagine it goes from here up and down whatever you graph for function f definitely it crosses the line y equal x somewhere this is the claim of this question or theorem as you can see all of my graphs here, they cross at least at one point y equal x. x is this and this is f of x. As you can see, in all of these, somewhere your function is equal to x. f of x equals x and f of x equals x. Also here f of x equals x. For all of the curves, whatever you imagine, based on this condition that f is continuous and it's from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1, this happens. And this is a really important result that we have from intermediate value theorem and it has many applications. Now that we get the idea of this question, what is the question actually? Let's prove it. If you remember the idea that we use to solve questions with intermediate value theorem is that first we define an equation for ourselves and the format of the equation should be something equal to zero so we move everything one side so here also I am going to do so look at this you want to prove that somewhere f of c equals c First of all, I replace c with x. 
and I say, okay, I have this equation, f of x equals x. I want to show that this equation has a solution c, and that c is between 0 and 1, and can be 0 or 1. So this is my equation. But this is not the format of the equation I like to have in IVD. If you remember, always we move everything to one side. So I move x to the left. And then I'm naming it a new function, f of x minus x equal to 0. This is my equation. I am going to name this something like g of x. So g of x is f of x minus x. Now that we have our function, we start to substitute 0 and 1 because f is from 0 to 1. So if you remember, in IVT always we do this. We have to calculate g of 0 and g of 1. What is g of 0? g of 0 is simply plugging 0 in this equation for g, f of 0 minus 0. No attention. What is the value of this? This equals to f of 0, of course. But what is f of 0? From the question, we know that f is a function from 0 to 1 to 0 to 1. Attention to this. f of x, based on this, based on what we have supposed here, f of x is always between 0 and 1. So, here we know that this is greater than equal zero. Now let's calculate g of one. g of one would be f of one minus one. Now back to here again. f of x for every value of x is less than equal one. So whatever you have here, f of one is less than equal one. If you subtract one, from something, from a number that is less than equal 1, we can claim that it is less than or equal 0. How equal 0 can happen? If f of 1 is exactly 1, then 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. But if f of 1 is less than 1, something like 0 0.9, 0 0.8, then minus 1, it would be less than 0. So, we have a function g that is greater than equal 0 at 0 and less than equal 0 at 1. Now, three different cases can happen here. This is something that some students forget to consider here. Usually they immediately, they immediately conclude from IVT that there is a number C between 0 and 1 such that F of C, G of C is equal to 0. Because look at this, G of 0 is positive. G of 0 is greater than 0. G of 1 is less than 0. So maybe immediately you conclude, so we can conclude from this that somewhere g of c equals 0. Actually, you cannot conclude this. Why? This is really important. Attention, I am emphasizing on this. Why? Because it's important. Why you cannot have this conclusion? Because if you remember, in the IBT, we have supposed something that we are not considering right now. We, in the intermediate value theorem, always we suppose g of a and g of b or f of a and f of b are different here g of 0 can be equal to 0 and g of 1 also can be equal to 0 so if g of 0 can be equal to g of 1 this is not part of the ivt because in ivt we are supposed these are not equal to each other so we have to consider this case that g of 0 equals g of 1 separately now we consider three different cases. First, we say, okay, let's see what happens if g of 0 equals 0. If g of 0 is 0, this means that f of 0, because attention, what is g of 0? g of 0 is f of 0 minus 0 equals 0. So from this, f of 0 is 0. 
We wanted to prove that there is a number c greater than equal to 0, less than equal to 1, that f of c is c. Here, we concluded that c is 0. Now let's consider the other case. What if g of 1 is equal to 0? What if this happens? That g of 1 is equal to 0, not less than 0. What happens if this? we have this case? From this, f of 1 minus 1 is 0, and so f of 1 is 1. This means that the c that we are looking is 1. These two cases cover these equal signs here. Here we suppose this happens. Here we suppose this happens. Now the third case is, is that none of these cases happen. We consider that if g of 0 not equal 0 and g of 1 also not equal 0, then these are different numbers. Attention, this was part of IBT. That was the reason I considered this case and this case separately first. If, if g of 0 is not 0 and g of 1 is also not 0, so they are different numbers, then from IVT, intermediate value theorem, there is a number C between 0 and 1. We don't have this conclusion from IVT that this can be equal and equal. Based on IVT, C is a number between A and B, between 0 and 1, not equal. So it should be like this. We consider the equals here and here. So if g of 0 is not 0 and g of 1 not 0, then from IVT there is a number c between 0 and 1 such that g of c equals c. g of c equals 0. Now from this, what we can call If g of c equals 0, what was g? g is f of x minus x. This is how we define g of x. So from this we have f of c minus c equals 0. And then f of c equals c. And this completes the problem. Let me explain again how we got this result. G of 0 is positive. G of 1 is negative. So somewhere between 0 and 1, G of C is 0. And attention, I consider G of 0 equals 0 and G of 1 equals 0 separately here. Here. So Based on this that I started with, I know that g of 0 is definitely not 0. It's greater than 0 and g of 1 is less than 0. So now the proof of this theorem is completed. Or you can say question. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please subscribe in my channel and see you in the next videos.